What's up guys? I am downtown San Antonio. A little bit different interview today. I do most of my interviews via computer webinar, but today I'm actually meeting one of my med school friends. Uh, she's a radiation oncologist. She's gonna tell us all about that field. Here, here we are, about to get started here soon. Catherine Mercado and I am a radiation oncology resident at the University of Florida and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, what it takes to become a radiation oncologist. Okay, um, for those who don't know, me and um, Kathy, we actually went to med school together and that's how we became friends back in a uh, long time ago, 2009-2010. So, uh, what was it about radiation oncology that got you interested in it? Sure. Um, radiation oncology is a subspecialty of oncology. So all of our patients are cancer patients. And one thing that is amazing about my specialty is that we get to work with patients that are really in need and we get to use um, the newest technology available to really help either cure their cancer or alleviate pain. We just try to increase longevity within cancer patients. And so the new, um, lots of technology, lots of innovation, lots of research that we do to be able to improve patient outcomes within um, the cancer world and also just helping people that really need you is why I decided to go into radiation oncology. Okay, so to become a radiation oncologist requires four years of med school and then mm -hmm. five years of residency? Yes. So you do your first year as a internal, kind of internal medicine resident. You're intern year and then you have four years of dedicated radiation oncology residency. Um, you see patients that are, you only see cancer patients your entire residency. You um, work with kids all the way to adults and you actually are, learn how to treat all different types of cancers. So I have patients that have breast cancers, um, brain cancers, pediatric cancers, skin cancers, I mean the gamut. And so um, it's really nice because we get to work with all the different types of subspecialists and surgeons and different specialties with respect to that. Okay, and is there a fellowship that most people can do or after your five years? Yeah, so most residents don't do fellowship unless you're really interested in something uh, specific. So for example, if you're interested in a certain type of technology like proton therapy, you can do a one-year fellowship in that. Um, or if you're really interested in certain procedures, which are considered brachytherapy, those are, it's a type of internal radiation that we give. And so you can do fellowship in that. Um, and sometimes if you are interested in, in a subgroup that is specific, like pediatrics, for example, and you go to a residency that doesn't have many, um, a pediatric population. So, but the vast majority of residents don't do fellowships. It's only five years. Gotcha. So for a radiation oncologist, say for instance, a patient has uh, throat cancer, and then they would come to you, and what would you do for that particular patient? Yeah, so when a patient comes in with any type of diagnosis, let's say they said, I had a neck cancer, like a throat cancer, they'd come in, we would see them in consult, um, and basically we'd talk to them about their options of treatment, we'd talk to them about their cancer itself, what we thought would be the best treatment options, we'll talk about goals of care, um, you know, how we want to move forward, and then if they decide that they want radiation, we talk a little bit about what radiation is which is basically high energy x-rays that we are um, using to kill cancer cells in a specific area in the body. And then we talk about the process. And so for radiation, you have to do a planning CT scan where we plan the radiation. And from there, after planning the radiation, patients usually are on treatment for several weeks. They get radiation every day. They come to our, um, our clinic every day to get treatment. And then after they're done with treatment, we usually follow them up for several years to see how everything is going. And so we do CT scans and other tests to make sure that the cancer didn't come back or and if, it, if it did, then we try to figure out what else we can do to help the patient and so on and so forth, so. Gotcha. Uh, what is a typical day for you? So typically um, in the mornings, we usually, I get in around 7, 7.30 and I am going to one of the tumor boards, which are conferences that we have at hospitals where specialists of a certain uh, cancer type, so for example, breast cancer, will come together and you'll have the surgeon, the radiation oncologist, the medical oncologist, which are the chemo doctors, the pathologist, the radiologist, all the different specialists that take care of these patients come together and talk about the different cases that we have. And we talk about a treatment plan, what we recommend. So that usually takes about an hour. Um, and then from there, I start clinic. Um, clinic, we'll see consults. 
Um, like I talked about earlier, sometimes we'll see follow-ups so patients that have been already treated with radiation and we want to see how they're doing, so we follow them up. Sometimes we have something called on-treatment visits, and so those are patients that are, are getting radiation on a daily basis. We see them once a week to see how they're doing. Um, and then we have problem visits. So patients, for example, that had just finished radiation or on on treatment at that time have issues with you know having symptoms, whether it's a reaction to their skin or their breathing or whatever the case may be, and we take care of those patients. So that's basically I have clinic all day. And then after clinic is done, um, I work on my radiation plans, my treatment planning. And so the, I see a patient in consult, they decide they want to get radiation. Radiation oncologists spend a lot of time trying to plan their treatment and design treatment um, for these patients. And so that's what I do afterwards. So we, we're in by 7, 7.30, we're out around 5-ish. Um, and we work during the week, we don't work on weekends because our clinic is closed then. Nice. When I think about radiation or just um, x-ray in general, I think about a lot of math. Is there, is there a lot of math? <laughs> there isn't a lot of math, but there is physics. We actually take up physics boards, um, which can be challenging. Um, the nice thing is that we work with a team of physicists. Um, the majority of the physicists are, have at least a master's or a PhD, and so they get to do all that work. Um, we are just kind of, we do have to know about it, but thankfully we have experts that that work on that on their own. Gotcha. Yeah. So you complete your four years in med school, five years of residency. Mm -hmm. um, I know it varies by location, but how much kind of radiation in college is expect to make once you're uh, done with your training? Yeah, so it depends on whether you want to go into academic radiation oncology, which is working as a professor at a university, for example, or if you go into private practice. But the general range is anywhere from like the 300,000 to maybe five, 600,000 is what depending on how many years you're out and where you're working. So that's okay. that's what you should be expecting. And any advice for people who are either going into pre-med or just radiation oncology in general? What kind of advice would you give? Yeah, so I think for pre-med, the biggest advice I can say is do as well as possible on your science, in your science classes, um, because that's gonna be super important to be able to try to get into medical school, and that's challenging of itself. With respect to radiation oncology, if you're in medical school and thinking about radiation oncology, Besides doing really well in your classes and doing really well on your step one exams, um, doing research in radiation oncology is important. Any cancer field, we thrive on innovation, and to have innovation, you need you need people doing research. And so that's all of the any any residency you go to, you will be doing actively being included in research while you're in residency, and we look for that in medical students that are applying for the for the for radiation oncology in itself. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, thank you.